Michael, I want you to know, I've been around this game for 50 years. This is the biggest thrill of my life, just seeing you in a baseball <laughs> uniform. Because I remember talking to your dad, and he, he used to tell me how you and he used to go out in the backyard down home, and he'd throw the ball to you, and then you'd get a little bat, and he'd pitch it to you. And, uh, and now you, you're trying to fulfill the dream that all of us had as a kid, someday to be a major league ball player. You've been a major league everything else. <laughs> now you're trying to be the baseball player you dreamt about. Well, I think it just being given an opportunity is something that I can feel very privileged about. I mean, uh, the White Sox gave me an opportunity just to go out there and see what type of skills I have. And uh, if I ever develop the skills to be up here, then great. If I don't, you know, at least I fulfill the dream, at least trying. And, and I've had a good time doing that. Let me ask you about the road trips. Have you been on the bus yet? <laughs> Not yet. You know, the road trips are coming up soon. But uh, I'm pretty sure that, you know, once you as a team, you, you travel as a team. So I will be taking a bus. It may be a nicer bus, but I will be taking a bus. <laughs> Michael, I tell you, everybody knows what a tremendous man you are, a real gentleman, a real credit to a community. And uh, uh, one wonders, one if, one if it's tougher than you think, maybe you can't hit this kind of pitching. Is that going to disturb you any? No, I think what it does is really gives credibility to the game of baseball as a whole. You know, uh, you know a lot of people view me as a, a decent athlete, and yet I'm trying to come out here and show that, you know, I found out that these these athletes out here, or these professionals are athletes, and yet it takes a real good talent, ex exceptionally talented player or person to come out and do this. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really having a good time just even trying, and uh, hopefully I can, you know, get better at it. If I don't succeed, at least I learn a lot about the game, and I can watch it with a little bit better interest. You know, Michael, already I, from reading about uh, what you've done in baseball, I, uh, I've i deducted that uh, hitting the baseball is your biggest problem. But let me tell you something. You're not different than anybody else. <laughs> they also, all have told me the toughest thing to do in baseball is to hit a good fastball. It's tough, I mean, because you, you're back there, you're trying to guess what the pitcher basically, and you're anticipating your rhythm off the pitcher's motions. And a lot of those things come into play that people don't take into account. And, and one thing that I found out is that, you know, no matter how good a hitter you are, you need rhythm just to, to just to create that hitting ability. And uh, I think that's something that I'm trying to adapt to right now. If if uh, you don't go ahead with baseball, what's next? I know you've tried golf. <laughs> Everybody knows how great a basketball player you are. Well, would you ever consider coming back to basketball, or is hockey your next game? <laughs> hockey won't be my next game because I can't skate, so I know that's totally out of it. But uh, I, you know, after that, after this baseball opportunity, uh, I think I just relax and I really enjoy my retirement. I think. You know, just being young enough to even try this, I was very happy that I got this opportunity. But after this, I can't see myself coaching, I can't see myself doing nothing but being a father and being at home quite a bit. You know, Michael, uh, I found out one thing that you uh, can't do that uh, I can't either, and that is swim. Yeah, I can't <laughs> swim, so you don't have to worry about me, you know, doing any swimming to try to get some recognition. I certainly can't swim. How, the, how in the world did you develop this natural style that to, means millions and millions of dollars to you on commercials. You do a great commercial. I don't know how I got that, but you know I've been able to utilize it to my best interest. It, it, I think it's a part of my mother and my father's personality, and it's kind of been passed down to me. And you know, I've just been happy to, that I could come through and do that and have the opportunity to do those things. Michael, the best of luck. And what a thrill it is for me to see you in the Major League Baseball uniform. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. Guess who's here today? Not only is he here, Michael Jordan, he'll be starting the game. He's batting six in the White Sox lineup. Stay with us for all the exciting baseball coming your way in a moment. The star of the day, the world's greatest basketball player, trying to make it in the major leagues as a big league ball player, Michael Jordan and Wright. 1-2 to Dave Otto. Got it in the air. Michael Jordan's first try on a fly ball. You betcha. Three and two to Jordan. A runner at third. Trying to bring in the first Sox run. On the ground. Fair ball. And Jordan with an RBI single. How about that? Well, that's what the fans, all 30,000 and some out of them, have been waiting to see all day long. 
Michael Jordan get a base hit. Not only a base hit, but a run batted in. The first Sox run batted in. Another standing ovation. And Jordan winds up at first. And now Jordan takes off. He might go to third. Oh, he'll slam on the brakes after the turn. How many times did you see Jordan, after an opposition's missed shot, go flying out on the right wing to take the ball on the fast break? Just like that turn. Long drive way back. This might have a chance. And it's gone. Home run by Vinas. Jordan to score in front of him. And now the Cub lead is down to 4-3. One out of three drove in a run. And that's what these fans are here to see. Jordan. He's handled a couple of chances well. He made an air on the ground ball. Got a base hit that drove in a run. There's another hit. A drive down the third baseline. The tying run may score. He's around third. Racing for the plate. The throw. He hasn't touched the plate yet, and he does. Michael Jordan has tied up the ball game with a ground double to left. And this crowd has seen what it came here for. And everybody's on their feet yelling. Two runs batted in, and there was nothing fluky about that double. That was a rifle shot down the line. And two for four, two runs driven in, and probably more standing ovations than anybody has gotten on a baseball <laughs> field in many a year. Okay. What a day for Michael Jordan. I let me hear you. I want a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Carry back at Rigby Field as we go into the bottom of the tenth, which by agreement will be the final inning play. The only way a decision can be made is if the Cubs score. Otherwise, they'll wind up in the tie. The pitch. Ground ball into the hole of shortstop to throw. And he is out. And this ball game is going to be called here, I'm sure. The umpires are still out though. Let's see. It's a tie at, at the end of 10 innings. And that is it. That's the end of the ball game. Nobody's taking the field. This game again has ended in a tie. And that means uh, 10 straight appearances between the Cubs and the White Sox. And the White Sox have yet to lose. They beat the Cubs eight times and tied them twice. And this game is over. We'll be back with you in a moment. The Budweiser play of the day is this one. This is Michael Jordan's double down the third baseline, tying up the ball game at four to four. The Budweiser play of the game featuring the great basketball star of yesterday, the future Major League ball player of today, Michael Jordan. <laughs> Every, look at that. Look at that conference on there. All the press talking to Michael Jordan, and he, his cup has got to overflow it. It's been a great day for him.